How can you get the most from Grammarly? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the Become a Writer Today channel. So I've been a Grammarly customer since 2014. I've tried the free version, the premium version, and now Grammarly Business. I've tried it across a variety of devices, tools, and applications. I also regularly keep up to date with what Grammarly is doing. So in this video, I'm gonna give you 15 different tips and tricks which will help you get more from this powerful grammar checker. Hope you enjoy the content in this video. If you do hit thumbs up and to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Oh, and if you're ready to take out a subscription of Grammarly, I do have an affiliate link, meaning I earn a small commission that will give you a 20% discount on Grammarly. Of course, you don't have to use that link and these tips and tricks should still help you. Let's dive in. My first Grammarly tip is to change your language preferences depending on the audience that you're writing for. So if you're using American English, your words are spelled differently to people writing in British English. To change these settings in Grammarly, simply click on the menu, go to language preferences, and then change between American, British, Canadian, and Australian English. And this will tailor the spelling and grammar suggestions that Grammarly makes. My second tip for you is to install Grammarly into the apps and browsers that you use regularly. So I use Grammarly on a Mac, so I've installed Grammarly onto my Mac and now it works in any writing application that I use on my computer. I've also installed it for Chrome and for Google Docs. And if you write on your iPhone or Android, you can install the Grammarly keyboard too. Now, when I go over to Chrome, for example, in Google Docs, I simply click on the G button here and it will present suggestions for or from Grammarly. It's the exact same when I use Ulysses, which is my current writing app. The G button appears and when I click on this, I will automatically get grammatical suggestions and fixes. So this enables me to use any writing app wherever I want and then get suggestions that I can use to edit faster. My next tip is to add custom words that you use regularly to your Grammarly dictionary. This way they won't be flagged as grammar and spelling errors. To do it, simply go into the settings of Grammarly, then go to customize and click on dictionary. Now you can add new words. So you can see here, I've added a couple of words like stable coins, DeFi, and the names of some apps as well. I've added these words because I write about cryptocurrency, but they're not recognized by a dictionary. However, they are recognized by people who read articles about cryptocurrency, and I don't want them to be automatically changed. This saves me an awful lot of time editing. Next up, if you're grammar checking something that's quite long, I recommend setting some goals for the piece in question, because it will tailor the suggestions that Grammarly presents. So to do this, you're simply going to click on the writing goals tab. Then you're going to pick a domain, intent, audience, and formality. If you pick something that's more formal, Grammarly will allow you to use complicated language. However, it will flag if you start using abbreviations or colloquialisms. The same will apply if you change your audience from general to expert, if you change the intent and also the domain. Let me show you an example. So if I change this to academic and if I change this to Chicago, Grammarly will now check that my work has used the Chicago Manual of Style. Now, when I click on this, you can see here that it's broken this up into something that's more readable for readers. In other words, it's turned it into a one, two, three list. Now it's up to me to decide if I want to go ahead and make this suggestion. Similarly, if I use an abbreviation such as I'm not happy because I've picked formal as the audience, Grammarly will flag this as a potential stylistic issue and say that I should expand this to I am. How much time you want to invest in this really does depend on how important the piece in question is. My next tip for you applies if you're a Grammarly premium customer. Take a few moments to use the plagiarism checker. You can use it on your own work to see if somebody has plagiarized you and also to find missing citations. It's pretty quick to use. Simply paste your writing into Grammarly, then click on the plagiarism checker on the bottom right of the screen. Now Grammarly will take a few moments to scan your article against billions of other web pages that are on the web. The caveat is that these web pages must be freely accessible rather than gated content. So this is more applicable if you're writing something like an article or a blog post rather than something that's academic. Once Grammarly has completed its check, it will show you if the article has been plagiarized anywhere. So in this case, Grammarly is saying 46% of the text matches this particular source, but it's providing a link to my site. However, it has also provided a couple of other links that I may potentially want to check or investigate to see if I've been plagiarized. But in this case, because it just says 1%, then it's probably okay. My next tip applies if you find yourself writing a lot of citations. Grammarly has recently rolled out a citation manager, which can save you a lot of time if you find this part of the writing process laborious. 
Now it's still in beta, so it doesn't work on every site. However, at the time of recording this video, it works on a lot of journals like PubMed and also on Wikipedia. In fact, to see it in use, it's easiest to demo it on Wikipedia. Here is an article about dogs. I have the Grammarly plugin installed on my browser. Now if I click on get citation, Grammarly will give me a citation, which I can format for Chicago Manual of Style or for APA or for MLA. I can go over to my Grammarly account or a Google doc and I can simply paste in the citation in question. It's a real time saver. My next two Grammarly tips relate to how your writing style applies for your work and for the publication in question. To see what I mean, go into the settings section of Grammarly and then go to customize. Then you're going to go to the writing style section. Now you can view all of the rules that Grammarly will check for. So here's one example, avoid biased language by age. Now if you use, say something that's biased about somebody's age, Grammarly will flag it as a potential issue. But if you find this annoying, you can simply turn this off. You can also flag if you want Grammarly to suggest adding transition words such as so or that for clarity. You can also look for other biased language by gender, human rights, and so on. The passive voice report is one report that comes up quite a lot in Grammarly. But if you want to turn this off because you're writing something academic, then you just simply click this. So take a few moments to read through all of the different rules that Grammarly uses and turn on or off whatever applies to your work. Now, the second part of this tip applies if you're a Grammarly business customer. There are additional writing style rules that you can use for you and your team. Simply click on the style guide option. So this is for Grammarly business customers only. Click on writing style and there will be a lot more rules that you can customize relating to family, disability, age, quotation marks, punctuation marks, and other grammatical issues. And you can decide whether your company or your business has a preference and then indicate if you want writers to use or follow this rule in a certain way. You can also add specific terms and terminology relating to your company or business so that they're spelled correctly. As an example, the term HODL refers to hold on for dear life is commonly used for people writing about cryptocurrency. So if you want to make sure everybody in your business spells it H-O-D-L, add it to the terms section of the style guide. And if somebody spells it the other way, it will be automatically corrected with some context from Grammarly. I regularly advise writers to focus on producing their first draft and to not worry about editing, grammar and typo mistakes. But this can be difficult to do when you're writing something and you can see all of these red underlines from Grammarly. Well, did you know you can simply click on the Grammarly icon, click on the cog and you can turn off Grammarly in the app in question or you can turn it off for 30 minutes. When you're working on your first draft, this is something that I'd recommend doing. My next Grammarly tip applies if you've seen a suggestion, but you're not quite sure if it makes sense. So let's pick one here at random from this test document. Grammarly is saying I should correct the verb tense to create. Now, if I feel like create is, or created is correct, I can simply dismiss this suggestion. However, if I click on see more in Grammarly, then I can click on this particular icon here to get some context behind this change. And I can also get some additional examples of what's correct versus incorrect. So if I want to improve my grammatical skills and my knowledge of English grammar, take a little bit more time to investigate the suggestions that Grammarly is surfacing and then decide what's right for you. My next tip is to use Grammarly's scores to figure out how to improve the quality of your work. I've used this in two different ways. A couple of months ago, I narrated an audiobook. I wanted to gauge how long it would take me to narrate specific chapters in the audiobook. So I pasted the chapters into Grammarly, clicked on the overall score, and then Grammarly told me the speaking time for each one of the chapters. This then helped me figure out how many days or weeks it would take me to narrate the audiobook in question. It's a pretty edge use case. So I'd also recommend you check out the readability score. Typically, higher readability scores are better because it indicates that the text is easier to read. This is what you want to get if you're writing online, unless it's for a really knowledgeable or expert audience. So try and get this score up above 80 or 90 if possible. You may need to use simpler or more concise language or change your sentence structure to do just that. And of course, the AI powered writing assistant in Grammarly can help. When you've written something and you see that there are 100 plus issues, it can be pretty disheartening. How are you going to get through them all? My tip for you is to triage them. Rather than working through all of the suggestions, I would start with correctness. These are the most critical things that you need to fix. These are typically the grammar, spelling and punctuation mistakes to address. 
So to focus on these, simply click correctness and then work through all of the red issues. If you're using the premium version of Grammarly, it will usually enable you to accept multiple suggestions at once. This is the fastest way to edit your document before publishing. Now, if you have a bit more time, you can spend a bit of extra time on the Clarity Report, which will identify terms that you should revise or potentially expand upon. You can also look on the Engagement Report followed by Delivery. But work through these in order of importance and based on how much time you have. My second last tip is to use a new feature that Grammarly has just improved. It's the Grammarly Tone Detector. It will help you figure out how your writing sounds to readers. It's particularly helpful if you write a lot of emails or if you're using instant messaging, Slack or social media, because you may want to change the formality, confidence and friendliness of something that you write. So obviously you're going to need to install the Grammarly plugin, which I've done. I've popped open Gmail and pasted in some text. Now Grammarly has flagged a potential grammar error that I may want to look at, but it's actually the tone that I'm concerned with. So I simply click on this emoji to see how it sounds to readers. It's suggesting that this sounds relatively confident, but a little bit disapproving. So if I was giving some advice to a customer, for example, I may want to adjust the tone of my writing. And of course I can also set tones for people in my business as well, that will help them figure out how to edit their writing in question. Now, depending on how long the uh, document is, Grammarly will sometimes provide tone rewrites as well. It is a beta feature, so I would expect this to improve over time. But in summary, just simply click on the emoji next to the Grammarly report, wherever it is that you write. My final tip relates to how much Grammarly costs. So you can try Grammarly for free and get access to some of the reports that I've shown you in this video. It'll cost you about $30 per month, depending on whether or not Grammarly are running a promotion. So you can always take out Grammarly for a month, use it for your writing project and then cancel. But if you're going to use Grammarly long-term, I'd actually recommend taking out an annual subscription because they will give you a discount. If you also want another discount, I have an affiliate discount for 20%, which I'll put in the notes below this video. Of course, I earn a small commission if you do decide to use it. Now, whether or not you use my affiliate discount, do consider how often you want to use Grammarly for, and that should help you figure out whether you should take out a monthly, quarterly, or annual subscription. That covers my Grammarly tips and tricks. Hope you enjoyed the content in this video. If you do, hit thumbs up. And if you really did enjoy them, then please use my affiliate link because it will help me earn more commissions to record videos like this one. If you want to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.